You know how we do. It's your boy. You know what? Let me just stop talking right there. It is your boy BQ, though. Man, I hate podcasting late. I really, truly do. And NWA is the one wrestling show that I watch as it airs. And I don't watch Impact as it airs. Mainly Impact because of the time. It doesn't jive with my work schedule. And then I just choose to watch AEW the next day. So NWA is the one that I watch. As it airs, and I say that, we're two episodes in. But man, I hate dropping this Power Moves podcast after the first one was pretty successful. I hate dropping it on a Saturday night, just a few days away from episode three of Power. But I want to remain consistent. Most of my Impact Wrestling, Impact Lounge, B-Side, listeners and everything, they already know that I'm a busy dude. And then you throw my normal job, you mix that with being a parent of four and my military duty once a week, one uh, one weekend a month. So it becomes pretty difficult sometimes to keep this going. But I promise consistency is coming. I promise it's coming. This is the Power Moves podcast talking NWA. If it's your first time listening to me, I am BQ and I have covered Impact Wrestling with the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. And various podcasts on the platform for many moons now. Not many moons, but it's been a few years. I've been really successful with it. The NWA was something that I really wanted to you know, branch off, diversify my content, and talk about. Because I was a big fan of Billy Corgan when he was with TNA. And then I'm a big fan of the roster that NWA has for the Power episodes. A lot of people that I enjoyed in TNA and... Impact, and even though the two companies are not going to be working together anytime soon, out of the mouth of Billy Corgan, it's all good because it's my channel, my podcast. I do what I want, right? So I'm going to try to get into this episode fairly quickly. Again, my apologize. I'm dropping this on a Saturday. Like that just makes me feel dirty inside. With my B-side podcast covering Impact, you know what I mean? It's kind of a, a focus a little more on the news and things of that nature. So it could come later. It can come throughout the week, whatever. But this NWA power one, I know that I be, need to be more consistent with. So let's let's just jump right into this. It, ju- it opened up with an Aaron Stevens promo. Now, when he had his short-lived time as Aaron Rex in Impact, he had about two or three good episodes. And then things started going downhill really, really fast. I think when he came over to Impact, he had a lot to prove. He was coming off being a comedy character, so when he showed up there, he was as serious as they come. And it worked at first. But then because the company tried to push him too fast and put the Grand Championship on him, which wasn't good for his style, it really hurt him with the company. And then he was gone six months later. Or three months later, something like that. Something crazy. He he wasn't there long. So... I was really happy that he joined the NWA because I'm a fan of his. His promo that he cut, now I want to say for me personally, and I'm speaking as me as a wrestling fan, you know, for the first half of this promo, I was like, what a great promo this is. And then the second half, I, I didn't really like it. And I understand he was, you know, trying to flip over to being a heel. You know, at first he was giving this rah rah speech and then he was flipping the script. I get that. I didn't like it though. Like this this don't look me in the eyes and everything. And I think what I didn't like is because I don't I want to say with the first episode of Power they didn't I didn't really hear this with the crowd. But with this episode there was a lot of laughing. And um yeah, wrestling is supposed to be funny and everything. You know, it's supposed to have its moments, but there was something about the laughter when he was out there that just it it took him took him down a couple notches in my eyes like I went from oh man he's fucking here to oh god what's what's this guy gonna do now you know so I don't want to make any assumptions because he hasn't wrestled yet but I'm super happy that he's part of the company so I can't wait to see uh, what he does going forward the first match was Ricky Starks versus Trevor Murdoch Jim Cornette must have had the line of the year here saying he looked like a baked potato with arms and legs Fucking line of the year, folks. 
this match was cool. Trevor Murdoch. I don't even know. I, I think he stopped wrestling. I think the commentary team was saying, and he came back for NWA. He he fits this, you know, this brand. I think as wrestling fans, sometimes we see a wrestler, and we think, oh, we want to see this guy in this company, and this guy in this company. But not everybody works in every company. So you know, for instance, I was watching AEW just just before I podcasted here, um, this episode from past Wednesday, and I was watching the Best Friends. And I'm like, I was just thinking to myself, man, they would tank in WWE. And if they were on Impact, people would make fun of them. You know, I think that gimmick on a, on a smaller scale just wouldn't work. Like, AEW is perfect for them. So what I'm getting at is, like, Trevor Murdoch, he he fits this, like, brand. If anybody does, this old, old school bruiser <laughs> type of dude with no physique whatsoever. You know, he, he moved around pretty good in this match, but... Um, he works like if he were to try to wrestle now in, in, in another company, like it just, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't get over for anything, but, uh, for NWA it works really well. Ricky Starks. This is my first time being familiar with him in any way. I've, I've never heard of him. Um, and he, so they're kind of touting him as their, their young gun, their rising star. And it was different watching this match because usually if you're watching another company and they're saying, Oh, this is, you know, this fast rising star, da 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 that this guy's out there doing flips and dives and all that all that stuff, you know, the the cruiser waste stuff we're used to seeing. I get the feeling he knows how to do that stuff, but it it's different. It, I just haven't seen like some like, like this young gun, this young cat come in and, and kind of wrestle that like more traditional style a little bit. It was it was real different. But it was almost like I kept ex- expecting him to to do something crazy, you know. But um, decent match. Uh, he he's definitely one to look out for with with NWA. And much like Aaron Stevens, like the first half of his promo, I was digging. And I pointed this out last week, where it seems like the wrestlers, many of them, are having like this this uh, mutual respect for each other, even if they're enemies. You know, you heard it, Nick Aldis's promo. Then here, Trevor Murdoch came and congratulated him. Said, "Just wasn't my night." I mean, I liked that. I liked the first half of Ricky Starks, and then the second half, I wasn't too into. I think he was. I think both of these promos were a little longer than I wanted. You know, they weren't like you know Seth Rollins talking for ten minutes by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, for me, they were both like a minute too long. You know, I thought I wanted him to get to the point a little quicker. I'm sure many of you thought this. But Ricky Starks, like, does he not resemble the early rock? You know, that when he's Rocky Maivia, I mean, there there is a resemblance there. You can tell he has some. He 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 gets some of his his character and his gimmick from. He takes something from that, not from the current rock, but something, you know, from from him back then. Um, he he takes something from there. You can tell. So uh, we'll see if you know. He reaches that, that the star potential, that, that star level, with these guys. Colt Cabana, excuse me, Colt Cabana. He does a backstage interview, and he announces or he introduces uh, Mr. Anderson as his partner. So, Mr. Anderson's another guy. I wanted to see what he's got at this point in his his career. When he was Mr. Kennedy. Now, granted, I don't watch WWE for shit anymore. But I, when he was Mr. Kennedy, he was my favorite wrestler. And when he went to TNA and he was Mr. Anderson, like he was gonna have more edge to him and stuff. But I, I just, I didn't connect with him the same way for some reason over there. Even though he was probably being more of himself, but I didn't like him as much. And then, you know, then he was gone for the company and he's been doing the wrestling school thing. So I'm happy to see him. I, I do like him. A lot of people don't. I like him, and then Colt Cabana. I'm I'm either way on. I'm I'm entertained by him. I'm entertained by his humor. He's not one of my favorite wrestlers or anything, but I'm entertained by him. So they have a match. It's a squash match, and NWA does this. They do the the squash matches because they want you to not so much focus on the two sides, you know, the two teams or the two competitors. You know, they they want you to focus on that one and connect with that person or that team first, you know, before they move on to someone else. So there was the Dawsons. Never heard of these dudes. If they would have put the Dawsons in there versus Kingston and um, Homicide, I would have been more focused on Kingston and Homicide because that's who I know. So the way that they, you know, introduced him and gave him the first match, like it, it allowed me to pay a little bit more 
attention. I think they took on the last the same two gentlemen that uh, the Dawsons took on the week before. I thought they said they it didn't look like the same to me. I didn't you know recognize them, but they, I believe the announcers had said that. So you know three and a three and a half minute squash basically, and then we get Kingston and Homicide backstage. So now now the you know the the energy of the show is is, is uh getting kicked up a notch. NWA Women's Champion Allison K takes on Ashley Vox. This was the one I was really really ready for because I'm a major Allison K fan. Um, I, I consider her a pretty good um, acquaintance of mine. So she's someone who deserved to be here. She she deserves uh, to always be on a on a decent size stage. She does. I was really disappointed when she left Impact. I know she left on good terms, but um, I think once someone comes over to the NWA side, I don't see them going back that way. So I'm happy watching her here. Takes on Ashley Vox, someone I'm not familiar with. I want to say, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, for those who watch both companies. I think she was when they, uh, a couple months ago, they did like a uh, knockouts battle royal in in Vegas, the one that... Um, Glenn Glenn Gerbo, um Glenn Goberti won Disco Inferno the one he like showed up and won even though it was sort of knockouts. I want to say Ashley Vox was in that match, so someone can uh, correct me if that's wrong, but I I feel like she was in that match. Uh, Allison K has said on social media this was someone she she brought over, someone she she purposely wanted to be there, and uh, she looked a little green, but you know, but she looked good too. I do like. AK's new finisher. I never liked the the silencer very much, and then the AK forty seven is cool. But I like this. You know, that's always actually been a move that I that I like. The I don't even know what um, what you call them as if it's a sunset driver or what. But uh, good showing for her. I like the the title. The title's different because it's got that you know p- her picture in there. That's really really different. And um, I like that they you know it was nice that they had the old title for a while, but I like that they updated it. A little bit. And I enjoyed the Allison K promo afterwards. It showed Tim Storm. He talked for a little bit. He refused to speak or whatever. Um, he, I think what was missing from this episode of Impact. Um, I'm excuse, excuse me. I'm so used to talking about Impact. This episode of Power. Is that. Tim Storm like really stole the show in my opinion last week. With just this passionate promo. And the, pro- the promos were more passionate there. This time they were like. You know more heel based. Little little comedy thrown in there, you know, but we didn't have that same connection to these promos because we we NWA has with the ten pounds of gold and all the matches has set this stage for Tim Storm. It's like we're all familiar with him. We're all we're all familiar with his run with the title, what the title means to him. So we were able to connect to that first episode a lot better than to this one. Or this one is almost like, okay, we're getting introduced to a few people. We're getting reintroduced to, to a few people. You know what I mean? So I'm curious to see with Tim Storm going forward. Hopefully he he remains. Hopefully he's not just like, okay, I'm going to retire now. You know, I, I did what I did. I was on the first episode of NWA. You know, hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully they find a way for him to stick around. James Storm cuts an interview uh, or has an interview. He's being interviewed. Another one of my favorite wrestlers in this world. Eli Drake comes out. Another one of my favorite wrestlers in this world. So... This wasn't as good. The interaction was as good between them as I, I thought it might be. But, you know, basically, James Storm did something which I don't like that wrestlers do in companies. And it's it's saying, hey, I'm the mid-card title, but that just means I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in line for the, the next title. Like, yeah, that's true. But I feel like when wrestlers say that, that they're devaluing, devaluing the title that they, they currently have. Like, you want people to think, like, you know... um, uh, I'm trying to. Th- I'm trying to think. I'm always going to use Impact examples. I'm sorry, but Brian Cage when he was the X Division champion, like he was like, no, now now this is the title. You know what I mean? And I've heard uh, through various companies, mid card title holders say that, like this is the title you want. Like I I get that that's the world title, but you got to beat me for this one. And and you know they have that confidence and that ego. So uh, you know I didn't really totally care for that. And then Eddie. Um, I don't know why I was going to say Eddie Edwards, Eli Drake. I basically said, okay, well, if you challenge and you get that title, like, you know, don't forget me. So they're they're definitely trying to set something up between the two of them, and that's something that I've got a lot of interest in. 
uh, the main event was, I don't know if this is the wild cards or wild card. It seems like they uh, flip flop between us, but Latimer and Isaacs, uh, Latimer, I'm saying Isaacs, they take on Eddie Kingston and Homicide. I was never familiar with Isaacs previously. Obviously, um, familiar with Latimer as Bram and, and Kingston and Homicide, very familiar with them. Kingston is another guy, and I've said this a few times throughout the podcast, another guy I was real excited about being part of this. And when I saw the roster, I was like, I, I've got a podcast on this this company. Like, this is great. And um, Kingston and Homicide are really cool. And it's it's cool because when when Kingston had, did his, you know, um, impact stuff, like, they never really let him work that much. There was a lot of mic work, and then when he had matches, they were really short, you know? And, and same even when... when Homicide came back and they were LAX. Like he had a match with Pentagon and it was all of four minutes, you know, and it was the main event. So NW was given that time here. And, and granted, this was six minutes, you know, but it, but it was, you know, it was really hard hitting and it, and it, it was only six minutes because of the finish, you know, it wasn't because uh, of the, the dis- disqualification. It wasn't that they just gave these guys six minutes and they lost, you know. So the Dawsons came and I don't know. I was a little indifferent. Um, this episode is, wasn't as good as the first one. I still enjoyed it. It's a really easy watch. You know, I watch women of wrestling too. And for me, that's the hardest. That's a hard watch. Like I'm watching that and halfway through, I'm like, you know, I feel like it's supposed to be done. So for some reason, even though I like the show, it's, it's just a difficult watch for me. And NWA is a really easy watch. And I really liked in the beginning where they're shouting out um, YouTubers and everything, you know, it made me feel like, damn, I'm a, I think I had the, uh, second or third highest listened to podcasts for NWA, but I didn't do a video version of it. So I didn't get to hop on there and people who got a lot less track traffic <laughs> got some shine. So I was like, damn. So I was a little, I was, I was a little bit jealous, but I was, I wasn't really big on his finish, but obviously there's a story they're going to tell here. So I'm not, I'm not reading into it too much. You know, I really trust what Billy Corgan and his team are doing together. And finally there was the, the interview with, um, Nick Aldis and Camille Dian. Uh, this was, I wish, you know, for me as a fan, I wish I would have waited a couple of weeks on this and told like a little bit better of a story because, you know, Joe Galley's sitting here like, I'm, I'm going to hit, the, I'm going to get answers. I'm going to have these hard hitting questions. Like we've only had one episode of power and one incident happened where he didn't let her speak. And all of a sudden it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to get answers on this. It would have been nice for them to build that up a little bit more and then do this sit down interview, you know, instead of on episode two, you know, so small critique, whatever, but overall power was again, enjoyable. Uh, I can't wait for next week. And as I said, this is the one I, I definitely watch when it comes on and it's an easy watch and I don't know what they announced. I think they just, I think James, Tim storm is going to talk next week. And um, besides that, I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for checking out the Power Moves podcast. Talk to you soon. Peace.